Hi, I'm Allie from New Scotland Knots and this is a podcast about knitting and all things fiber arts. Welcome back. It's 2021 and it's the first official Knits and Knots um, episode of the year. So that being said, I do have a lot to catch you up on, so it might be a long one, we'll see. I haven't done it in over a month. It's almost been two months actually, so there is the holidays happened and everything, so a lot, a lot has gone on. Yeah, grab your drink, maybe a cup of hot cocoa, and uh, we'll get right into it. So, I have some stuff to show you. Um, but it's not as much as I thought I would have to show you by now. I thought I would have gotten a lot more done knitting over the holidays and a lot more knitting done in January because I was on such a roll after after all the Christmas knitting and the gift knitting. Um, but I think what happened was I kind of got a little burnt out, a little tired. Um, I wouldn't say lost my mojo, but just just got tired and did other, did other things. Um, and I was having a lot of um, hand and wrist problems. Like I know after a certain amount of time, I just have to stop and stretch and take it easy for the rest of the evening. So I haven't been doing as much knitting as I'd like to. Um, and hopefully I can, I can get back to it. So shamefully, the first um, work in progress I have to show you is something I haven't worked on since I don't know, Christmas Day, maybe Boxing Day, and that is a Christmas sock. <laughs> Even worse is it's actually almost done. It's almost, I already have one sock. This is for Evan for Christmas. This is a new tradition where we both get matching Christmas socks at Christmas time every year. And I, I finished one right away, right after I did all of my other Christmas knitting and I'm halfway on the other. I'm, I'm almost ready to turn the heel, but it's it's a little bit shameful. <laughs> I only have I don't know two thirds left of a sock, and then I'm done, and they're ready. So I'm sorry that Evan did not get to wear them for Christmas, which means I also haven't started on my own pair for Christmas uh, 2020. But yeah, they'll um, they'll be finished eventually. And I'm trying not to be too hard on myself, just given, given I was I was a bit tuckered out, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but almost like Christmas knitting out, um, and I love the holidays, but I did the stockings and all the gifts, and I think the deadline just kind of got to my head, and when I realized I don't need a deadline, this is just for, this is just for us, um, and nobody's going to see them because we were alone this year, um, due to everything in the world. So I don't worry about it. So I haven't touched them. I haven't been inspired to pick them up. I'm hoping to now. I think I'm ready to finish them and then cast on my own because I would like to get more into sock knitting. Mainly because my feet are cold and even in my wool slippers wearing regular socks, I'm still too cold. <laughs> um, so I'd like some extra, some extra comfort on my own feet. But in order to do that, I have to finish these first. So that's work in progress number one. That hasn't been a work in progress since since December 2020. And we're in February, so whoops. So that's number one. And work in progress number two has been, I have my Hohe and Co bag, loving it. I got it for Christmas. Um, it's just very, not plush, plush isn't the right word, but squishy. Right? It just kind of falls. Anyway, I just finished sewing up the, or biting off the shoulders last night, so at least it looks more so, more like something than a mohair square. But well, it's not mohair at all, actually. So this is going to be a cardigan. I just bound off pretty clean. The pattern said to do the bind off to so you so you show the the seam, but I didn't. I didn't want that look, so I just did it on the inside. I flipped it inside out instead of having two right facing sides together. But it's almost done. I just need the arms and the button bands. 
but you know what, before I get into it, so this is the Velvety Cardigan by Georgia Fibers, I think it is, um, or Georgia Fibers, I never, I never know. So you can see up close, it almost looks like a waffle knit. Let's try to stretch it out. But what the pattern is, is just knit one, purl one, and then knit back across. And because it's knit one, purl one, it's quite, you can see better that side. It's quite slow. It's quite slow. I can knit and purl continental one at a time, but I can't do it together. So on one side I knit continental, and on the other side I knit and purl, I guess English, like the throwing, and it just takes forever. And my hand hurts, and because it's on, I wouldn't, normally I wouldn't consider this a tight gauge, it's a four millimeter needle. I think the suggested size was three, or 3.5, but that would have been way too tight for this yarn. Here, I'll show you the yarn. The yarn is Drops Melody. So this is an alpaca nylon blend, I think it is. Let's find out. Alpaca, yeah, 71% alpaca, 25% wool, and 4% polyamide, which I'm pretty sure is, is part of the core. But, the original pattern, and I did this because it was, technically it's called bulky, um, just because of all the fluff, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider this bulky. Hi! Hey, sorry about that, so we had to adjust a little bit because I'm pretty sure my camera, or not my camera, my phone ran out of, um, ran out of space and working on an old phone, so can't even do updates anymore, <laughs> so we're just working with what we got. Um, so if things look a little slightly crooked or different, I am sorry about that. Watch me just make it more crooked. Anyway. So I'm pretty sure where I was at was saying that the yarn for the sweater is, I'm only, I'm using one strand of Drops Melody, Drops Melody, uh, which is an alpaca blend, and the original pattern called for hold three strands of mohair together, um, and I thought, oh, this would probably become a similar, a similar weight, just rather than buying three times the amount of yarn, I bought a third of the amount of yarn. But because of it, I think what happened was if I did it in the required gauge, it would have been really tight and right now it's already hard enough to knit with. I'm doing it as previously on a four millimeter needle because of the fuzziness of the yarn and semi-small gauge. It's just hard to see and it's hard to knit with, and I've been quite aggravated at it, and it's gotten me a bit down, even though I think in the end it will pay off. But it was just, it was just, it's just kind of rough, and because it's knit pearl and then the type of yarn, it's, I'm knitting it pretty slow, so I got a little bit discouraged, especially since I started with a twisted ribs, and I just don't think it was a necessary, it was a lot of work for a design feature you can't really see. Um, so I don't think I'll do that for the ribbing. I think I'll just do like a partial twisted rib where you knit through, you purl normally, but you knit through with the back loop, or I'll just do knit one purl one. We'll see. Anywho. So, again, the pattern is the Velvety Cardigan Mohair Edition, which I'm doing in alpaca. And since I'm doing a bigger gauge, I did work out the math, since I have less stitches per inch, if I you know, I just did it, so I'm doing a different size, so I'm doing size 3. But when I did my calculations, I actually only needed to do size 1 for it to technically fit. And I tried it on, and it's a bit tight. It's not going to be a billowy, cozy cardigan like I thought it would be. Which, to be honest, I almost expected. I had a similar experience with the last pattern from the designer. I don't know if if it's me and it's my math, and I don't know my body size well enough. Or maybe it's the designer's math. It's it's hard to tell because both times I did, I did it in each gauge. So I did the math in order to meet the fabric that I wanted. So it's hard to tell. It's not like if I if I stayed true to the pattern, I would have had a different experience. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see what it's like. If it is too small, I might. I mean, I'll try to block it out. There's there's a decent amount of stretch to it, and that could be another thing because it is. It's almost like a rib. It's like it, it does expand. So I might be able to just block it all out and 
also because it is alpaca like I'm hoping it just drops a little bit <laughs> um, but we'll see and if not I'll give it to my sister I'm sure she'd wear it I don't I don't consider it itchy but I think she'd want to wear um like a long sleeve top um under it but we'll see what happens plugging away at it and hopefully now that the body part's done everything else gets a bit quicker and I find that motivation again to finish it because it has been quite a quite a challenge to to get where I am now so yeah that's what I have to say about this so next up is a few finished objects one I started at the end I think it was December 30th or something like that I started and I was almost done I almost finished it on New Year's Eve uh, I just sat in it the whole day it was great but I did finish it in in the early new year and I've been working and I've been wearing it ever since and that is the Turtle Dove 2 by Spostrigo. Um, it doesn't look like much when you take a picture of it flat or hold it up like this. It's just kind of an awkward, an awkward shape, almost looks cropped, long arms, kind of weird, slow raglan, um, steep, steep and slow raglan. But let me tell you, it is light as air and so cozy. So again, this was used with Drops and Alpaca Blend. Um, this was Drops Air and they're like gray and I love it. I kept thinking I was going to run out of yarn though, which was kind of scary and I didn't. I actually have an extra ball and my only regret is I really wish I used that <laughs> because although I did, I extended the sleeves an extra six inches to the pot to what the pattern called for because where where it's a slow decrease and such a steep decrease like the armpits like here like it is really far out since it's just a wide crop style but I wanted it to be like full sleeve so here for example like here's it's almost breaks the length but I wanted it to go right to right to my wrist and then the other thing is and it was also my first time doing the pattern so I did want to stick to it and not make too many modifications. I figured sleeves, they're gonna be fine if I make them longer to my taste. But the other thing is the body. I'm gonna hold it up, hopefully you can see it. There we go. So it is a split hem. And you can see here where my, here my thumb peeking out. It's only, I don't know, six inches, six inches before you do a ribbing. Now the ribbing is significant, um, excuse me, but, but it's still like short and I think on most people especially since it's wider it'd be fine it would fall it would actually drape a little bit longer than than it was made but since I gave this I think I worked it out to be eight inches positive ease but it's probably closer to four I should really take some some measurements and it's just cropped enough where that if I wear a pair of jeans like it's fine, it'll cover it'll cover the top of the top band of the jeans, but then it's on the side because of this split hem, because this hem's so long, it goes to my waist and I have to wear a tank I mean I'd wear a tank top or an undershirt under it regardless, but I really want to just because if not it's showing skin and why would you wear a sweater to to be cold? <laughs> so I have two options since I do have that ball of yarn. I could try to do sweater surgery and cut it, which is ter sounds terrifying to me. I'd actually want to do the same thing to this sweater. Um, cut it, knit with that extra ball, and then Kitchener it, sew it back up, Kitchener it, stitch it together. But I've never done it before and it sounds a bit uh, daunting. I mean, I'd practice with a swatch, of course, but especially like with picking up legs stitches it always gets me since I look at it one way but then I knit top down so it's not happy faces it's frown it's frowny faces um so I never know which leg to pick up but that is an option or I'd love to have one in every color um so I could just make another one and then do some additional modifications to the pattern and give this one to my mother because she has um she's she's very interested in it and can't wait to steal it from me one day <laughs> But we'll see, that was my first cast off of 
2021 and it, it took a very short time to knit. To knit. Pattern was very clear and I can't wait to make another one. Next up is part of my monthly subscription box to Belfast Mini Mills and for all the other ones I have from them I haven't had time to knit them since I was working on Christmas knits in September but this came in December right when I was noticed perfect timing. I got it right before the holiday so then oh, I didn't start it right away I think I'm, yeah I started in January but I finished it within days and I actually knit it three times. Anyway, here's this adorable hat. It's called the Alpaca Love Hat by Sand and Sky Creations and it is part of the Belfast Mini Mills subscription box. So every month, I'll talk to you later about it, I get a box um, and this happened to be it. So with the box, I have tons of leftovers. Um, but it came with their island collection of worsted weight and I got, mine came in brown. I actually requested it. I watched their podcast and they said, oh, we're going to just randomly assign colors, but if there's something you like, let us know. So I did reach out. I said, oh, I love the, the sample you have. I, if, if there's any leftover, um, I'd like mine to be paired with the brown. I think they also had, they didn't show you, it would have just been a surprise. Um, so I'm kind of happy I, I did ask. But the other colors I saw online were burgundy and blue. Um, but the brown works great. So brown, and as you can see, there's tons left over. I think I could make another hat. And that is merino, 100% superwash merino. And this is 100% alpaca, which is why it's called the alpaca love hat. How cute is that? I don't think I have quite enough to make another one with the same yarn combined. So this might might go in a different project as, as color work or something, but I absolutely love it. And it took me three times to get the right size. I couldn't, I thought I match gauged, but when it came to knitting knit, and I thought I had a small head because every hat I ever buy is too big for me, but apparently mine, <laughs> mine is bigger than what the pattern, pattern uh, called for. But that was good. It was just more time to practice, more time to love the yarn, more time to enjoy the hat. I tried lat Latian braids for the first time, which was super easy. That's something I always thought that was really difficult and it wasn't. And I really enjoyed it. It was, it was different to not do a rib on the hat. I usually do that for my own. And when I was done, I had a spare toff pom-pom um, from the UK. And this is an alpaca, alpaca hair pom-pom and topped it off just to spread even more alpaca love and it just so happened that it matched the alpaca yarn pretty well too. So that worked out. That is, I've been wearing it ever since I made it. Not that I go out much, it's really just for groceries <laughs> and the library, but yeah, I love it. And I can't wait to get more, more wear out of it. It keeps my head warm and I got a pom pom bounce it around. So that is project number two that's finished. That also happens to be the December Belfast Mini Mill subscription kit. And last up is a little baby sweater. How cute is this? The lighting is not grabbing the the true color. It is more of a turq like a, a dark turquoise, I'd say. Maybe this, no, it's not. I try to take pictures of it all the time too when it never comes out which I'm kind of sad about because it is really nice. If you look online though, it's the Cascade 220 um, 811 Cormo Blue. So you might be able to get a better idea that way. There's a surprising amount of depth to it considering it's um, one of the mass produced um, solid color yarns. It's not their Heather collection, it's their solids. But yeah, anyway, so this is I forget the name of the pattern, but I'll I'll do it below. Um, it wasn't my favorite pattern to knit. I I was new to making pom poms, and I thought there'd be more direction of placement of pom poms. So I think if I knew how to do pom poms, I think I would have been fine just to Google how to do them and um, add them to the flax or something that has a bit more instruction. But nonetheless, it's adorable. A couple modifications. I made and would have made would be right away you start the pom-poms right away I did two extra rows after the ripping not that you could see it um but they they said start it right away and I would have given it five rows just to bring it a little bit down and 
even it out. It looks a bit too close to the neck. One modification I did do though was they had a three stitch, so a six stitch like raglan, raglan increase. And I just did one on each side. I, I didn't think it looked a bit funny. It looked really wide. Um, and then the pom-poms were really sparse because of it. So I just narrowed it down to two. I'm not the only one who's done that with the pattern. Other people have too. But yeah, it was pretty cute. And I don't, I'm excited to finally have babies in my life to knit for. This is for a family friend and you'll see more baby knits too that because I'm making, I'm practically making a whole wardrobe. So I'm really excited about it. And they're so tiny and quick and great satisfaction making them. I never knew I could make a sweater in, in a couple of days. I'm sure if I really sat down to do it and didn't have the pom-poms, it would have been done in a day. Um, it's almost like a hat, right? Like instant, satis uh, instant gratification. And it's just so small. So yeah, that is my third finished project. I do have something else to show you. It's not something I made, but it was something that I was gifted from a good friend's mom. And it is these mittens. Aren't they darling? Let's try them on. She's been my best friend since high school. And her mom's a, she, her mom's a knitter and a crafter and we'd, she'd, uh, she gave me yarn. I gave her scrapbooking stuff. We always swap things. Really nice. And a couple of years ago, you know what? I'm going to grab them because why not? Sorry about that. So like I was saying, my best friend's mom made me these mittens. This is the, that's the front and these are the back and I absolutely adore them. They're so, it was so sweet of her to make them. I think she got the pattern from, it might not be saltwater mitts, but one of those, one of those books. And she sent a really kind, a really sweet note. And I just love them and they fit me perfectly. I have small hands and they're the perfect size. They're nice and small and tight and no wind gets through them, I wear them. Again, when I go out, I wear them all the time. And I still have her mittens that she made me when I was in university, which I mean, wasn't too long ago. I think it was second or third year. Um, and they're these thrum mittens. You can see they've gotten, they're well worn because again, I wear them. I've worn them for years and I wear them all the time. They're the warmest ones I have. And they're small again, <laughs> it's perfect. Um, my friend, I remember when she gave them to me, she's like, yeah, I thought my mom was, I said, oh, those are beautiful mittens, mom. And she thought that she was making them um, for her, like as a something for Christmas. And then she, um, she was asked to, to hand them to give them to me. But don't worry, I made I made her a pair of, a pair of thrum mittens a um, couple years later. So it, it, all, it all worked out. Everybody got, got thrum mittens. And she has, she has many pairs too. But yeah, these are just super, super special and I love them so much and I think it's just the kindest thing because as a knitter I know all the work that goes into it I know whether it's the cost of materials I think this is Briggs and Little and quite li like just like the heart like I understand the love and the time and the effort that it takes to make them and I appreciate them even more that that I didn't make them and it was a gift from somebody who really who really knows so yeah I, I'll, I, I'll cherish these forever so I did want to, want to, um, want to share that. And if you're ever watching, thank you so much. I love them. Um, I think they're spectacular. Yeah. And then if you're, if you're, um, if you're watching out there, thank you very much. I love them both and I wear them all the time. Next up is yarn, which I've gotten a lot. Um, I've gotten a lot quite recently in a short period of time, but most of the purchases came in January and it just took a lot with um with shipping to get here since I'm not really going out. So where to begin? Where to begin? How about you know what? Let's start with the yarn subscriptions. So as I said previously, I subscribe to Belfast Mini Mills, um, and I've gotten a couple subscriptions to catch you up on. And the first one being was the because of delays in Canada Post, everything's been coming a bit late. So this was the November, I don't think it's in the right order, so please forgive me. This was the November set for Belfast Mini Mills. 
It's a mini skein set and it came with all of their all of their sets come with patterns. Um, so for the hat, I happened to use the pattern. This was the December, this was the November. The November was gloves, I think trigger or trigger mittens, which for those of you that don't know, it's I'm pretty sure it's a Newfoundland um, style of mitten. And you have your mitten, and instead of having your four fingers together, you have a separate one. So it's easy. So you have, it's almost like, it's like Spock. So you have your thumb, you have your pointed finger, and then your other three fingers that stay together. And then it's just a bit more functional. I think it's more, um, fishermen used to use it more often just with dealing with ropes and, you know, fishing on the boats. Um, and it's just a bit, it's a bit more functional but gives you more warmth than a normal glove would where all your fingers are separated. So there's a pattern that comes with this kit. I don't know if I will do the, the trigger mittens. We'll see. There's, and I do have a couple kits stacked up now. I saw a, um, I saw a post online and this woman did, she used her, her subscription and did a, the shift cowl by Andrea Mowry and it looked phenomenal. I think it's a great idea. And I think it might be the perfect amount of yarn that you need to make one of those. So maybe I'll start making a bunch of those and I can give them away or keep them for myself um, or collect a bunch of minis and use them, I think, for yokes of a sweater. But for now, I'm just holding on to them and getting a little, um, a little collection going. So that was November and December and then in February, I got the January one, which already came pre-wound. And it is, it's kind of nice having a pre-wound um, if I did want to cast something on right away. It's, it is their island collection of, again, merino wool. I think most of their wool is either um, exotic or merino or superwash merino. And this came with a pattern for a cowl, a crocheted cowl. And I don't crochet. I'd love to learn. I've been trying to learn off of YouTube. It's not, it hasn't been working for me. Um, so I think I might just have to take a class when those are available again. Um, so again, I might use this for a yoke. I even thought what would be cool is since these two bottom colors are quite similar, they're just a hair off. I thought it would be cool to do like a slip stitch hat, like have these ones in the background alternating and then these in the front. We'll see what happens. And if not, again, there's always mini skein projects, put it in a sweater yoke, hats, mitts, um, maybe not mitts, there might not be enough yarn, but we'll see, we'll see. And then if, I would say if you're interested in the bowl, and this yarn is, a, this bowl is a special yarn bowl, it's one of a kind, the, the, Woodworker only made one. This was his tester. Um, my aunt brought it up. He's like, oh, you should Do you make yarn bowls? Like I'd love to buy one. Um, he said, no, I don't um, But I'll think about it. And he went to make one and then months later she went back She said, oh, did you ever do do the yarn bowl? Um, he said, yeah, I, made, I have one and you can even see there's little um, There's little marks from where he was trying to figure out where the curb should go. I mean, the wood's beautiful, too and He said, yes, I made one and she bought it off of him and um, and gave it to me. I I think my mom bought it off of her and then gave it to me. So it was a family affair, but it's beautiful and I love it. It's great and it's nice and solid. So just stashing those in there for now. So yes, those are all of my Belfast Mini Mill subscriptions. And I have one more subscription and that is to Longway Homestead in Manitoba. So I've mentioned these before. But this is another, again, another monthly one. But this one you get a different yarn, uh, you, you get a different fiber breed, sheep breed, each month. So she does the same, same idea just for spinning fibers. So if you're a spinner, you can do that too. But since I knit, I've, I've been getting the knitting ones and they're just a pleasure to get every month. You get an info card um, with information about the wool, about the sheep. Um, and I'm pretty sure the farm info as well. And then you get to try out the yarn. So I haven't actually knit with any of them yet. I'm trying to figure out, do I want to do one big project with all of them when I have the 12 months, um, like make a blanket or something, or 
should I break them up and then just do a true yarn sampler? Like I don't quite know what to do, but so far I have Rembulet, which is a DK three ply and it is grown and milled in Manitoba. And this is a true like dark brown. Yeah, you can almost see that. And this is fin fin sheep. I don't think I've heard of them before. Uh, two ply worsted, natural. Again, grown and milled in Manitoba. In a gray. And most of them are, yeah, they're all 100 grams. Um, so the yardage would vary depending on what what weight as in how thick the yarn is. So fingering, worsted, iron, um, lace, you know. And this, my recent one that I just got in the mail the other day, it's perfect timing, everything is uh, is arriving, um, is Corydale. And this is a single ply sport. And again, grown and milled in Manitoba. Now they come in interesting packaging. They come squished in an envelope with, um, not a laminator, but like the food saver where you suck all the air out, you can put meat or soup. It's kind of funny when you see soup in the bags, but you cut it and then it just poofs right up. You give it a few snaps and I just put them in. I skein them just to keep them organized. It's not the cleanest thing as you can see. I'm not very good at it, but it does the trick. So yeah, this is my fourth month. So I still have eight more months to go on that. And another is, and the next thing I have to show you is yarn from, and more yarn from PEI. And this time it is from Fleece and Harmony in PEI, also in Belfast. Um, I think their neighbors are right down the road from Belfast Mini Mills. So I'll show you one. I bought a sweater's quantity. Yeah, there you go. You can see it in that light a bit better. So I bought a sweater's quantity because this is a really special yarn. It is their Iona Bunny, which is 35%, 85% uh, wool, usually it's lamb's wool, 15% um, Angora. So Angora is a type of rabbit, for those of you that don't know. Really big, fluffy, adorable creatures. And I think they have nine of them, which they hand brush every day and eventually, which is about every once a year, every year and a half, they um, they have enough to make a batch of yarn with that 15% makeup. And it just so happened that this was that batch. And the last batch I bought was, yeah, December, December 2019. And it was end of, end of December, right before the new year they came out with it. So it was almost exactly a year because this came out in January. And I think they still have a few left. I'll check for you. In order to get the link, you do have to be a subscriber, or to their to their um, to their mailing list. Or if you're a subscriber to their YouTube channel, you can go to the to the links, and then they'll directly link you. You just can't find it if you're on the site because this is a special a special blend. But yeah, I bought a sweater's worth, so I am planning on doing a sweater from Lane Magazine. But we'll see if that changes. I'm really happy with the color. The last time I bought it, I bought three skeins of a light green, which I have showed you. It's that vet, that lace, um, that lace work vest by Georgie, Georgia Fiber Arts. I was kind of disappointed. I have, I still haven't done anything with the pink, the pink yarn or the rest of the green because I still have one skein left. So I thought the purple was a better suited color. And I'm happy that they also extended their color range because before it was just light pink, light purple, and, um, like green because of course it's lamb's wool it's angora it's soft i think it's more of a baby is in mind for the um for the clientele <laughs> or the the recipient of it so yeah we'll see what this gets made into i am excited for it and i do have to figure out how to use the other stuff because it's special yarn and i do want to make a nice project with it okay and last up is another sweaters quantity apparently i've been I've been into making sweaters. It's they have been knitting up fast. Um, aside from this cardigan that I've been working on, and this is all Mineville wool project, which is gorgeous. So this is a Nova Scotian yarn or dyer. Okay. 
it's called blue sage it's great it's not quite green it's not quite blue i think the the name is quite quite true to it and what it is is it's a merino linen blend with a mohair nylon blend so that's why you have the two the two textures here see so you have the two yarns you have the fluff and then the soft merino and linen sorry the light's a bit weird it's hard to capture the color but it's beautiful and i'm so excited to knit with it um Again, I do have a project in mind, and I hope I got enough yarn. Good enough, good enough. It's not, it's not very, see? It's not very clean. Um, especially compared to this, it's perfect. But, so what I am planning on doing is the... I want to say it's called... Do you hear that? You know what? I would pause, but I'm going to keep going, because if construction started, it's just not going to stop at this point. So I'm really sorry if you can't hear that, and it's loud and bangy. But I think I'm going to make the, I think it's called the Mousset by, again, Espastrico. They have beautiful patterns, all free, um, which is fantastic. And I thought this would be perfect because that sweater is very lightweight, airy. It's also held with mohair, so I thought it would give a similar vibe. And because it is linen, I thought it would be better for like winter to spring transition which is also why I went with with this color. I thought it would be really nice going into spring and then I can still wear a sweater even though it's kind of, I mean, I'll say it's kind of warm. Hopefully we're, we're in the um, single digits and not, not minus 23 with wind chill, but we'll figure that one out. But yeah, I'm really excited. It's lovely. Um, I love all the yarn made from, it's a family. So we have Fleece Artist, Handmade and Fine Yarns and Mindful Wool Project and all the women are family members, each of them has their own. And this yarn is actually still on sale, so I will link below if you're interested. And if you spend over a certain amount, you get free shipping, which is really, which is helpful. So yeah, those are my works in progress, my completed projects and my planned projects, we'll call them. We'll see how long it takes to do them, but they are planned. I am trying to be a bit more mindful of the yarn I buy and what I'm going to do with it just rather than picking up a pretty skein and thinking oh I need this in my life. So we'll see. We'll see how long this lasts. I hope it does last because it would be good to start building a wardrobe that I love and wear and I love every part of it from the pattern to the yarn and the color and the fiber makeup and of course making it because that is it's great that we get to wear it but it's it's also entertainment and we get to put all this time and love in every stitch. I don't have too much more to show you, but I will show you what I have been reading. I got Dying to Knit and Spin, uh, Dying to Spin and Knit by Felicia Lowe. Yeah. So this is the maker of Sweet Georgia Fiber or Sweet Georgia Yarns, which is a Vancouver dye. She's really popular, I'm sure you've heard. But yeah, this is her book, and I'm only a few chapters in, yeah, I'm only on page 66 or 67, and it's fantastic. I'm so excited to get, get more reading. And right now it's only, I've only read about color theory and as a, and I've, I've done, I had a whole class about, um, design and color theory during my undergrad for marketing and as somebody who is artistic like I do enjoy it but it was an awful awful boring class and what they needed to teach us in a whole semester she taught me in 60 pages and it was just so much more eye-opening and it made a lot more sense and of course beautiful to look at so I'm really excited to to read more about it. This is a library book though, so I do have to finish it soon, but I have every intention. I already have it on on my um, my wish list. That's what I do with my knitting books. I tend to get them at the library if it's available or uh, whether that's um, like online through the app or in person. Uh, don't worry, everything goes through a quarantine period. And then if I do like it and think it would be a good reference book or I'd want to read it again, that's when I, when I'll purchase it. So I think this will definitely be a purchase, even if it's just for the first 60 pages, which I'm sure would be just as good and interesting. 
so we'll see. And I'd really like to learn spinning. That's part of the reason why I got it. Um, I thought it'd be another good fiber art to get into since I don't need a lot of space, especially if it's just with a, spin a hand spindle. So we'll see if, uh, if anything goes farther with that in the meantime. I don't know if there's anything else. Yeah, there's not too much more to share. I reflected a bit, I think, in my last video of looking forward, and that is, as I previously stated, um, being a bit more mindful about my yarn consumption and the patterns I choose and the make the, the fiber that's used in the yarn and the colors just to make sure it's something I'd wear and use or if it's a gift that it's it's good for the person and I would like to start really breaking through through my stash I think last year was the year of knitting for before I mean it was also gathering yarn and, and loving every part of it but before I would just pick up a skein here and there not knowing what to do with it so I think I'd really like to start using those whether it's making a project all together or doing little things and saving them as gifts if I don't think the yarn's for me anymore it still had its place and its purpose and inspired love and creativity at the time but we'll see we'll see what happens so I'd really like to start making a dent in my stash kind of get my knitting mojo back once I finish that card again which I think will happen now that it's um that it's mainly done and it just needs arms and the the ribbing around I won't worry about buttons yet I'll have to shop for them online since everything's still closed and if buttons go don't get added for another few months oh well not the end of the world so yeah thank you for joining me I hope you made it through the whole episode I know it was a long one I'm glad we got a good catch-up though and if you did, please give us a thumbs up and like and subscribe. Um, leave a comment. I love reading, reading comments. Everybody's so nice. And I hope you have a great day. Yeah, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay, take care. Bye.